Um, Dorian is uh, is he going to practice today? He did a little on the side yesterday, and we'll see where he is today. You know, so I don't have a you know it's really a uh, what can go on. Today's Wednesday. You know, we got to we have to get some work in uh, in the next few days if, if we can. If not, then we're very confident in, in Austin and what he did. You know, he came in and I thought he did a nice job, so we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. So he did some work on the side yesterday. Um, we'll see what today handles and I but don't have any expectations one way or the other in terms of what that would be. So. How would you kind of compare and contrast what Dorian gives you versus what Austin gives you at quarterback? I think they're similar. You know, you, you look at the Austin picked up uh, – you know, big first down when we had some coverage and took off, and you know he can, uh, you know he can beat you with his arm and with his leg. I thought he did. A, you know, they both throw a nice catchable football. So you know, there's there's similar traits between those two guys. It's not a uh, one guy's got the ability to run and the other guy doesn't. You know, that's the one thing with Austin. Austin's athletic. He's a, he's an over 20 miles per hour guy with his you know his GPS tracking, kind of similar into where where Dorian is. So they're. They're both all three quarterbacks, and even Colson, who's not eligible now, but all three of them kind of fit that mold. You said, you know, they're not design runners; they're not running backs that can throw. Um, but if the defense gives them the opportunity, man coverage, things like that, where their backs are to the to the offense, they can tuck the ball and take off and, and hurt you with their feet. So um, there's not a big contrast between all four of those guys in terms of what they can do um, throw-wise and arm and, and run-wise. So. What about Chase Griffin? If it comes down to it, how do you, how do you see him? Yeah, you know, just a young kid that came in in the spring. Uh, really smart, really intelligent. He just, you haven't seen him um, in game action. You know, you've seen him in practice. And, and for the quarterback more than any other position, uh, that's the one spot uh, that you don't really know until you get him in the game. You know, Sam Tigliano once said that, you know, you don't know, it's like a tea bag. You don't know what you get until you put it in hot water. And hot water is a game for a quarterback because they're in red jerseys in practice, so you can say, hey, this kid stands in there great because he also knows he's not going to get hit. You know, the game is a different deal for him. So um, real confident in his understanding and what we're doing, but you really don't know if, if Chase had to go in. And he would be the next guy in because uh, Colson is not um, eligible right now. So um, if, it, if Dorian didn't go, it would be Austin and then it would be Chase. So. Your offensive line right now is a little bit of extremes. you got some, some youth, some extreme youth, and a lot of seasoned veterans mm -hmm. mixed together. How would you gauge the performance of the yeah, offensive line right now? You know, now? I think the unique part is the seasoned veterans have only played a year, so it's not like they're fifth-year kids that have got 40 starts under your belt. You know, Chris was in the same spot that Duke and Sean are because he started as a true freshman for us last year, so he's really – just played last season and the beginning of this season. You know, Boss was a defensive lineman um, that played eight games for us last year and is now playing center for us. And then Jake Burton's first start was last year. So, um, you know, when you look at it, when Chris Murray is your grizzled veteran on the old line, um, it just speaks to the whole group. But I, I think um, Duke did a really nice job the other day. You know, when it was his first extended playing time, he played 25 snaps against Washington State the week before and uh, like everything in this program it's earned and he earned more playing time uh, and played the entire game against Arizona and we thought uh, as a group that, that I think Duke's getting better and did a really nice job. I think Sean's getting better you know, the more experience he gets and it's the same thing with that whole group. They're just starting to gel. I believe they were better last week than they were at the beginning of the year and that's kind of what you want in that group is how they can continue to develop and, and move forward as a unit. So. Boss uh, said he'd lost 25 pounds. Is that by design and what, what, what does that do for him? Um, I think part of it was that, you know, I think, you know, when our, our guys all have individual development plans, so they all got IDPs with our strength and conditioning coaches of, you know, some kids are in the gains category, some kids are in the leans category, depending on what your body type was going into it. So, you know, we want your body mass to be um, muscular, in nature and, and and that's what we're working for with all of our guys so you know a guy may have lost 25 pounds of body fat but he gained 12 pounds of muscle so there's only a exchange of 13 you know we've had other kids um duke clemens is a kid that lost 12 pounds of body fat but gained 12 pounds of muscle so he weighs the same exact thing he's 272 but what's that 272 look like you know what i mean so there's a you know we're always trying to do that everybody wants to be uh, you know leaner and faster but you also don't want to be can't play the offensive line anymore under 250 so um, you know, I think boss is, is just kind of really I mean, it's what boss is all about he's just such a hard working kid that um, you know whatever Frank and his guys are, are doing with him in the weight room and kind of that, that structure um, you know, he's, he's really taken to a full force so.
do you, do you see a better player as a result of his work? Yeah, I see a more athletic player. You know, mm -hmm. so you watch some of the things Boss does, especially, um, you know, with your center getting to the second level and getting up on linebackers and things like that. Um, you know, it's probably the most athletic position of, of the offensive line, you know, in terms of what the, the center has to do at times. And I think really what you can do offensively, really the athleticism of your center kind of dictates some of the schemes that you run. Um, but if, if you got a nose guard and he can get off a nose and have the guard capture him and then get up and block linebackers at the second level, it's obviously more beneficial to what you can run from a scheme standpoint. So um, I, I think it's helped boss. Also, the other part is, you know, your ability to play an entire game when you're not lugging around an extra just 25 pound weight in your back pocket. That's that's not of any use to you. So, um, but it's it's not surprising the boss because of his work ethic that, that he can put himself in that situation. So, um, but I think it's it's, it's paid off for us. Oregon State, yeah. uh, what do they bring to the table both offensively and defensively? Well, I, I think offensively, they have one of the top receivers in the country. Um, you know, he's got some circus catches when you look at film on him and just say, holy smokes, you know, he had 10 catches last week against Stanford. He had 9 to 9 in back games. He's, he's obviously their leading uh, receiver, but I think he's got, I want to say, 30. And the next second receiver's got 12 catches. Um, so it obviously starts with him on the perimeter. I think Luton's doing a really good job. I think he's at nine touchdowns, zero interceptions. So they're protecting the ball really well. And Jonathan's known for what he does with the quarterback spot. And his, his, you know, everywhere he's been, you know, was a great quarterback himself. So I think he's they've got a good attack that way. But they also have a two pronged attack at tailback. Um, both of those guys can can hurt you. Both are averaging over seven yards a carry. So I think there's a there's a mix in there. Um, they're not a one-dimensional team. They're just going to throw it every down and just throw it to one receiver every down. You know, they, they mix in the run really well, and the other receivers complement complement them well. But obviously, I think when it starts in the passing game, it starts with, with Hodgins, and that, that's the guy we got to have our, make sure we have all of our attention and focus on. So. You, you went from uh, uh, fourth down at your own 36 in the first quarter last game. Are you, are you becoming more aggressive on fourth down uh, the opportunities? No, I, I mean, every call is within where we are so it's not um i just can we make it you know what i mean and if we can make it then we're probably going to go for it if i don't think we can make it then we're probably not going to go for it but it's also in your film study of who you're playing and what that opportunity is so it's not a hard and fast rule like well when it's on the 36 and you play this other team are you going to go for it? well what is their short yardage um set up what do they have do we feel like we've got a good play call do we feel like we've executed it very successfully that week during practice and to feel confident in it then then i think it, we're, we're going to go for it and then there's a difference between fourth and a long one and fourth and a short one too so i think there's some other things you have to that all factor into it but it's not a hard and fast um, you know it's like coach belichick said last week it's not an analytics thing where we say the numbers tell you that on the 36-yard line you should go for it, but on the 37-yard line you shouldn't go for it. It's it's really an intuitive feel based upon how you practice and what they how they do it and kind of what the course of the game is going on. So, um, you know, every game will be slightly different, I think, just because the opponent is slightly different and, and our players are slightly different. But, you know, I got a lot of confidence in Josh in those situations just because of how hard Josh runs um, that, that we, can, we, we can convert and then the flip side of that is you have to be able to know you're going to put your defense on the field in an adverse situation. So, how are they going to be able to respond to it? So, uh, 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 follow up, follow up. Okay, uh, Austin, uh, uh, second to last drive, Austin. I, I believe you guys were at the 48 of Arizona. And you did not go for it. Was that because Austin was in the game? No, no. Just it was kind of a down distance no, situation. It was a down and distance situation, and kind of where we are. How many timeouts are left? Can you know? Can you pin them down and punt it? There was a lot more time left in that game at that point in time. So. And I don't think it was a fourth and one. Was it a fourth and one? No, it was like fourth and six or something. Yeah, well, yeah. something. I mean, like I'm that. not a math major, but I think there's a huge difference between fourth and one and fourth and six. So you know, that's the distance. Obviously, was was a factor in that decision and kind of where we were in the field at that time. But it wasn't a, hey, this kid's in a quarterback. We're not going to go for him fourth and six. You know, that it was really in that. It took, and for those two specific situations, I would say that the distance was probably the number one factor that we were factoring into our heads. So. And who you're playing. Now, I know we went forward on fourth and long against Washington State, but we felt very confident. Different defense, different setup. What did they run in those situations to kind of go for it? So I, it, it's, you, I, I've never looked at one call versus another call and why you did it here, why you didn't do it here. There's so many different factors that are involved in that. So.